Welcome to a new Tech Explorations podcast, everyone. Today, I'm joined by Ahmed Burs, a veteran in leadership roles across the military and federal government sectors. With over 30 years of experience under his belt, Ahmed has developed expertise in fostering communication skills and leadership development in the STEM community. Today, Ahmed offers training and coaching services designed to help individuals navigate the professional challenges. His unique angle is the importance of soft skills in complementing technical proficiency. Ahmed stresses that to truly make a mark, especially in STEM, one needs to go beyond being just good at the job. They need to become leaders. In today's podcast, we'll explore these ideas with Ahmed. So Ahmed, welcome to the podcast. How are you today? Thank you. I'm glad to be here and I really appreciate you taking the time and allowing me to be on your podcast. It's my pleasure, Ahmed. Um, so you got in touch with me a few weeks ago um, and uh, said you'd like to, to join me on the podcast. So I thought that's, this is interesting because when I looked at your profile, um, I, I saw these these two, I guess, uh, skill sets that are not so prominent in STEM circles, and that is leadership and communication skills. Typically in this podcast, we talk about technical skills, right? So I'd like to ask this uh, interview, this discussion by asking you how, why did you, and, and when did you realize that communication skills and leadership development in STEM are just as important as programming and engineering skills? Well, I think it's important to begin uh, when I was in the military and uh, one of the things I found is, you know, successful leaders, it doesn't matter whatever level they're at, they can communicate effectively, communicate in a way in which uh, the most senior person understands whatever the role is. One of the things we had when I was in the military, especially when you were doing training or, or deploying was a mission statement. Uh, you got to know exactly the mission statements allows soldiers to go ahead and, and complete the mission, regardless of what it is. Um, regardless of how many people are left. So I'd say early on, I realized that the, the need to communicate was really um, was really needed. And in regards to being a good leader, if you can't communicate in a way that motivates and helps people want to do the mission or want to do whatever is the required, required of them, that's a skill, that's a soft skill because it requires emotional intelligence, requires reading a room, and these are things that can be developed, but for some folks, they might not realize how their uh, the way in which they talk, the way in which they come across is impacting others. Uh, when I left the military and started working for the federal government, I, I had the opportunity to work with the United States Army Corps of Engineers. And in working, I worked with a lot of uh, engineers, uh, folks that uh, had advanced degrees in, in, in engineering, uh, the practice, um, the professional engineering certification. I'm not sure if that's what's available in Australia, but in the United States, the PE certification is like a really big deal. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them had uh, project management um, proficiency uh, letters behind their names. So in any instance, they're very good technically. I mean, uh, yeah. they could do data analysis. They could uh, set up, they could create, they could build something from the ground up. They're extremely effective technically. However, uh, the issue was, and, and that's where I came in, uh, you would promote someone who was extremely technical, excellent at their job into a leadership role, and then the team just falls apart. Or uh, they get into uh, challenges with people and they're not able to do what they were hired to do. So at that point, the job I was at, I was like a mediator. And I would come in and I, we kind of talk things out. And what I realized uh, after seeing these incidences, you know, two, three, four times, it wasn't necessarily that they needed, they understood. It wasn't necessarily that they had problems with their job. They just had problems communicating. They had problems understanding. And for a lot of engineers and people in STEM, it's black and white. It's not, there's no gray area. Either it is or it isn't. You know, two plus two equals four. There's no way around that. And that's fine. However, when you're working with people, two plus two may not equal four, it may equal three, 
or you know so you have to understand where people are coming from and for a lot of folks if you've been successful at doing what you've been doing and now you're in a leadership role you have to be developed into that so then that's kind of where my uh where i began uh, working with folks in stem so i guess if i understand correctly <clears throat> excuse me you you first came into contact with the culture of clear communication clear lines of communication uh goal orientation obviously the military has got goals that must be achieved and very often they are high stakes goals as well so it's probably a good environment where you can understand the the importance of clear communication and obviously leadership there's got to be a, a very strong sense of of trust towards the person that gives you a command or gives you an instruction so all that happened in the military uh, could you help us understand when did you actually became a, a part or a member of the stem community because i want to see or i want to understand if you realize the lack of communication and leadership or i guess objectives in the stem community uh at, at that point once you joined that community you became active in it you started training uh people in stem and then you realize that you can't really go too far without uh, instilling some of these concepts that you yourself acquired in the military so um when did stem became part of your life well uh interestingly enough after i left the military i had several jobs one of my jobs i was a uh, I got skills that enabled me to teach information technology, and I became an information technology teacher. Uh, was it, it was at a, school or a college, perhaps? It was a it was a local it was a college. It was, yep. it was a local college. So uh, I was an adjunct there, and in teaching these things, I realized how technical it was. And like I said, the students were could flourish on the technical aspect, but. Uh, I also taught career development. <laughs> and within career development, I taught skills like how to give presentations, how to goal setting, you know, a lot of career development things, um, such as interviewing skills and things of that nature. And so I realized, and this was before I, I went to the Corps of Engineers, but this, so then at that point, I, I started realizing that for a lot of young people, and when well, they weren't young people, they were called uh, non traditional students, and non traditional students being like, a, uh, people who are going back to school, things of that nature. And yeah. they just didn't know how to do a lot of the things that they may have been required to do. So then, hey, listen, you're excellent in the information technology field, but you can't do an interview. Uh, you, yeah. you don't you don't you don't know how to make that eye contact because you know you, the, the things that are requiring you uh, to be successful, you can do that. But outside of that. So then when you say, when did I come into the STEM field? I say I dabbled in it. But then when I was in actually working with the with the Corps of Engineers, that's when I, I say the, the light bulb turned on. Right. Uh, I, one of the one of the roles I had was I would sit on interview panels. And uh, sitting on interview panels, it's like a like someone comes in and they'll interview for like a supervisor supervisor job in a, as an engineer, a supervising engineer. And they come into the interview and their resume would look fine, but you know they couldn't articulate how they performed tasks. They weren't able to kind of communicate to the hiring officials that they were the right person, the right fit for the job. Yeah. But there's a lot of aspects that those soft skills in developing, they play into uh, how well a person can proceed throughout their career. Yeah. I I can identify with everything you said uh, in my training in, in engineering at university. I obviously was very deep into acquiring technical skills. When it came to communications, my communication skills amounted to writing assignments and reports, yeah. right? In, 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 in writing, basically handed over a report to my supervisor or to my teacher. Yeah. I may have done a few presentations like um, keynote or PowerPoint presentations, but that was it. Uh, so yeah, uh, my first interview to get a job, uh, I I remember <laughs> articulation was a problem. Why are you good for this? Uh, I've got a degree. <laughs> yeah. I should be self-explanatory. No, but it's not self-explanatory. Right? <laughs> so 
I wish uh, I had someone like you as a teacher to explain these things. So maybe maybe we can dig into this now, uh, Ahmed. Yeah, sure. So let's. So now, could, could you tell us what like what do you do now? How do you how do you help people in the STEM context or outside of the STEM context? Because these are, I guess, kind of universal skills that everyone needs to have. Whether you are a doctor, university lecturer, or a business person, uh, these are, I guess common denominator types of skills. So can you explain your approach? How do you get, say, a student who clearly needs help in making eye contact with another person, whether colleague, interviewee, customer, but uh, they don't know how? Mm -hmm. How do you approach that with them? How how do you help them improve on on both, I guess, Actually, I won't say both because I think they're quite different leadership and communications. You can tell us about how those are similar or different or whether you develop them together. What's your approach? How do you go about it? Well, you know, as a, as a coach, one of the things is uh, unless you identify that there's a need, unless you identify, hey, listen, this is what I wanted, you know, I, unless you got the hard truth, like, hey, maybe you've given a presentation and you're giving a presentation to audiences full of leaders within an organization and you didn't talk to anybody about the presentation's content content and so no one understood what you're talking about Mm -hmm. and so then the leadership says hey listen you won't be giving any more presentations anytime soon until you figure this out Mm -hmm. so then at that point that person says hey listen i need to invest in a coach or someone that's going to help me develop Uh, in regards to communication and leadership uh in my mind, uh, leadership is like influencing people, but you never stop communicating. You are always communicating. And the most successful leaders are excellent communicators, you know, and, and that's that. And I think the important thing about it is, especially people have to understand that you don't have to be the same person that you were. You, I mean, under, you know, you may have a background in this but that doesn't mean you can't develop into something else, you know, because a lot of people, you know, they, they want to influence others. They want to be a part of the organization. And sometimes people have to sit down with you and say, Hey, listen, you're great, but you need to develop these skills because we want you to get promoted in the agency. We want to see you grow. So then for a lot of time, for a lot of times, it's not me reaching out. It's them saying something, some significant event of it occurred. And they're like, Hey, listen, I got passed over for promotion. Uh, I um I got passed over for, for promotion. My leaders told me, hey, I need to work on the way in which I develop folks. Uh, all my whole team has decided they want to quit and they want to go somewhere else. And I'm the only one there. And you know, as, as as the story goes, the yeah. leader's responsible for everything. And if your team wants to leave, then that's, you know, you have to look in the mirror and say, hey, what can I do to improve? So there's normally some kind of uh clump, <laughs> I want to say clump climactic, but there's some, some kind of event that occurs that says, hey, right. I need yeah. to reach out to someone that can help help me improve in my skills. Got it. Yeah. So there's something, um, I guess, uh, external that yes. may trigger that realization that you need to get better in, in this case, communications, and then they can find you and uh, ask for help. Is it communications that comes, like, you, you need to develop your communication skills before starting working on leadership skills or do you do both at the same time what do you think i would say i would say you 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 have to do you have to do both of them at the same time because if you're influencing someone um regardless of what it is uh, you have to be able to inspire that person to do something but i think even more so uh, for me i think it's important that you have to find your voice like who are you as an authentically who are you because even if you're an extremely technical person who speaks who speaks that way and you need to tweak things, that doesn't mean you have to change who you are. But if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to uh, really impact change within an organization, you're going to have to change the way you do things. I mean, that's that's the is of it. So a lot of it is, hey, um, John, what is it that you want to work on? OK, well, where do you want to go at? Okay, I want to I want to do A, B, C, and D. Well, where are you at? You know, I'm at D, E, or I'm at D, E, and F. So we got to figure out a way. How do we bridge that gap? Let's work together. 
to bridge that gap. Oh, you want to be a leader? Um, I'm going to ask you, okay, have you volunteered for anything? Uh, well, no, I haven't. Have you, uh, you know, one of the, the, the best tools that I've been able to use to develop my leadership schools is in Toastmasters. I, I mean, oh, yeah. you have Toastmasters in Australia. I know yes. you do. It's all over. But Toastmasters, number one, Toastmasters helps you develop your speaking skills, but it helps you develop your leadership skills because a lot of times uh, there might be, there's requirements um, of you within the, the club to do some things that you can't do by yourself. So you have to ask for help. And if you've ever led a team of volunteers, I mean, that's like a leadership challenge by itself, mm -hmm. but that grows you as an individual. And then taking it back to your job, you know, what is there something that you can do? Hey, is there something I can volunteer for? Because it's going to grow you. So, I mean, like, as I said before, you don't have to be the person that you are. You can be this brand new person. Um, you can change all of whatever thoughts you've had about yourself. You can break that mold and become something different. Um, mm -hmm. So then that's the way well, I kind of look at it. It it really goes into core psychology, doesn't it? Um, you, as you said, you need to basically break the shell of a person that that, that, that wants to grow into those yeah. leadership roles. Communication mm -hmm. is obviously key there. And that's mm -hmm. a skill that, uh, if I understand right, you're saying that it's a skill that can be learned. So myself, for example, I consider myself a total introvert. I don't like talking to people very much. I'm not sure if that comes across. But even for someone uh, like me, like an introvert, the skill of communication can definitely be learned. And there is a process, but it does require a lot of core psycholo psychological change and basically breaking that, that hard shell that most of us uh, grow up with, mm -hmm. I guess Toastmasters would help there or any environment would, that requires the person to go out, Stretch. communicate with other people, right? And uh, basically make things change. Well, I, I mean, I uh, the terms introvert and extro extrovert, you know, the way I kind of look at things is, whenever we put ourselves in a box, it's like, I'm an introvert. Okay. I am. I, I need to get away from people. I need to sit down and recharge. However, I also realize that me doing those things that I like to do, just sit down and, and not be bothered with folks, is not going to allow me to grow my business. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. going to allow me to, to help. Like one of my goals I have is to positively impact a million people. I can't do that as an introvert. I can't do that if I'm sitting at home, because, and, you know, and, and this is, I wouldn't say it's touchy feely per se, but it's important that if you're a positive influence and you're leading people positively, people will want to be around you and people will want you to lead them. I mean, it's, I mean, there, there's more to this than that. So in learning to communicate better, you kind of change who you are. Uh, it's possible. I mean, I've been, I'm not sure about you, but if you've ever been in a room somewhere, and then someone walked in and sucked the oxygen out of there. It's like, man, this dude is here. Really? Oh, man. How? And then some people, then there's that opposite. Someone will come in, everyone's whole uh, demeanor will change. They'll be upbeat. They're smiling. So uh, there's a lot to this. And, and, and as I coach people, I, I want them to keep that in mind because, you know, what you do does impact others. So as you're learning to communicate better, as you're leading people, you know, you'll feel better about yourself. And that goes, you know, with the more competent you become in doing these things, the more confident you'll become in being able to take on other tasks. Uh, yeah. Hey, I volunteer to lead this. Hey, you know, I'll, you know, do this paperwork, you know, things of that nature. So, um, I, I'd like to, to switch maybe to a, a practical um a sense of like I'd like to switch our discussion to a more practical route. So I'd like to ask you. Let's let's focus on communication, and then we can we can go to leadership after this. <clears throat> what are some practical, I guess, communication skill building exercises that people can consider doing in order to become better communicators? And maybe focus on on STEM. So, for example, I like building circuits. I'm very good at that. 
uh, mm -hmm. but my communication skills are bad. Uh, what are some, say, three, three or four things that I can do to improve in that? Well, one of the first things you can do is listen more. And in listening, when you listen, I mean, but li attentively listen. Don't just listen to speak, but listen more. Listen to what people say. Uh, that's number one. Number two, observe. Uh, was it 80% of communication is nonverbal? So mm -hmm. people are saying things. It's like reading the room. They're saying things. They're doing things that uh, unless you're paying attention, because you have to, I mean, it's like anything. You didn't learn it at first, so you have to study. You, you have to study people. Yeah. Just look at them. And in being an attentive listener, you can read people's nonverbs uh, as, you're, you know, as you're listening to them. Are you are you giving them feedback to let them know that you are listening to them? Are you looking them in the eyes? Are you nodding your head? Are you letting them know that you understand? And then at the end, after they've said what they've had to say, um, are you either parroting or paraphrasing what they said so that they understood that you said so they understood that you're heard? Um, <clears throat> hey, so, Jim, I, I, I love I love eating cookies. Oh. From what I understand you to say, you love to eat baked goods. So then that's letting that that's giving a, a person the understanding that you not even heard them, but you know, you're you're putting it back to them. And you have to practice those things because uh Stephen Kobe in his book, um The Speed of Trust. The seven oh, yeah. he it says not the seven habits, the seven habits yeah. is another one. <laughs> Him and his son wrote the book The Speed of Trust. Stephen Covey and Dr. Stephen Covey. But anyway, uh, he says, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Yep, yep. And in communication, if I seek to understand first, I need to understand where you're coming from. Then, then I let you know that I understand where you're coming from. And then I regurgitate or I paraphrase it back to you. That lets them know that you understand them. And so, you, you know, you're building a relationship off of that. Because that's all communication is, relationship. But I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so as you were saying that, Ahmed, as you are basically giving those, um, I guess, three or four uh, exercises, um, I was <clears throat> I was imagining a introvert engineer in a social environment, like in, in a physical meeting, I guess. There are not that many <laughs> these days, but in a room with other people. Um, in such situations, I remember from from my own experiences, you, you, especially if the people there are, uh, are not familiar with you, you, you go to a new meetup, for example, you don't know anyone there, you do tend to be a little bit closed down. And what you said about listening is that I realize you tend to be a bit closed down. That means that you, you shut your ears, basically. You do not... Um, uh, capture information from, from your environment and most important you're not uh, processing that information and therefore you can't communicate and if i understand right what you're saying is that open up open ears and eyes receive information analyze it like you do with a data sheet right understand mm -hmm. what is going on around you and then offer your analysis results back and that will establish at least our first level of communication with other people, and you can build from there. Um, am, am I understanding correctly what you're saying in this regards? But you know, there's there's nuances to it. You gotta want to know. I mean, honestly, you have to you have to take a genuine interest. Like for me, I take a genuine interest in people yeah. when I'm talking to them. Uh, I, I want to know. You know, hey, what's going on with you? You know, where are you from? You know, what are some of the things you did? I mean, and speaking to you, you said you're going to take that road trip. And, I'm, mm. and it, it got me thinking, like, man, I haven't gone on a road trip. I bet you that's going to be fun. They're going to stay at hotels. They're going to visit spots. They're going to see stuff they wouldn't see. And so, you know, your energy transferred to me and me going back to you. I It transferred back to you. And we're even over Zoom. So this communication thing, it's not that challenging, but you have to value that person you have to hear what they're talking about because like i said when you're talking about a road trip it's like man i haven't done and he's going to canada and all i need is a passport <laughs> wow you know that sounds really fun uh driving up to detroit because I, I live in dc so detroit is like five or six hours and then yeah. stopping and then going across the water 
going to Toronto. I mean, there's just a lot of things that, but for me, when I talk to people, I try and find out things about them that excite them because that energy excites me. Yeah. So if you're looking to really communicate with people, you know, as, they, as the saying goes, uh, even as a team leader, I always tell my team, you know, if I help you succeed, you're going to help me succeed. So then I, I get to know, you know, for me, I, I just do different things. Like if it's their birthday, I send birthday, <laughs> I send birthday presents uh, because we're virtual now. So mm-hmm. I get their addresses. I send them if it's, uh, you know, Christmas time, I, I'll send gifts. I mean, that's just you have to do. And that's why I said it's important to find out what it is that you, you know, your authentic self, because for me to do those things, that's me being authentic. If I do something for someone, I'm thinking it through. But that's my thing. So then that may not be your thing. But I I guess the whole part of it, if you aren't comfortable with communicating, as opposed to thinking about the worst part about it is, oh, man, um, what if this person rejects me? What if it's the exact opposite and you meet a friend, mm-hmm. you meet someone that can help you go to the next level? So then, I mean, that's I mean, that's the basis of it, you know, because for me as an introvert, a lot of my introverting things began when I was in grade school and middle school. And, yeah. you know, I was an awkward kid. I played Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. That's where a lot of damage is done. <laughs> Dunge- yeah, and it is. That is, you know, uh, we find ourselves as adults still dealing with, with things people have said to us as children. So then yeah, uh, we're not children anymore. We're adults. And, and we, can, we can rewrite the future. You know, you're not doomed to stay in it. So then yeah. with that, you know, all those things being said, you know, when you're looking to establish relationships of value, then it's easy to communicate. It's easy to, hey, listen, when I ask a question, people are going to hear me. When I say things, people are going to listen to what I have to say. Yeah. I guess uh, the more you do it, like any any skill, right, it, yes. it does become easier because it does become more like second nature and you do get to enjoy it a lot more. In communication and leadership, I guess, uh, like any other skill, uh, that that's also true for these two skills, right? So um, I, I've got two follow up questions on on communication, so we can go into leadership on that. So the, the first one is: Is there any difference in in your advice to people that communicate offline, so in a room with other people, versus uh, especially in a post-COVID world, online communication, like what we are doing now through Zoom, but also through social media, through email, <clears throat> through um, discourse, uh, forum, servers. Um, it's still communication, but are there any differences there that are important enough to require, I guess, a, a different approach? It, so then I think it's important. Uh, that whoever you are, you stay consistent. Uh, and one of the things I learned when I was in, well, I didn't learn it in Toastmasters, but you know, you're not supposed to speak on sex, uh, politics, or just mm. in bad language. Okay, mm. and those three things. And religion. And religion, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In religion, uh, not unless you're a pastor, and yes. a, a, or you're, 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 your you're <laughs> yeah, that's part of your job. But the point being is that you are, uh, I mean, you're publicly speaking all the time. There's no time when you're, especially nowadays, when you can put something on, you know, you someone can find you, uh, MySpace, when I would, whenever I, uh, <laughs> Whenever I I taught information technology, I was like, okay, go on your, and this is like 10 years later, go on your MySpace, Google yourself, Mm -hmm. what's coming up, you know, what what is your brand? So then it's important that whatever your brand is, you stick to that. And your brand is part of how you communicate with others. So if you have a brand that, that, you know, says stuff that's off the wall and all the rest of that, then that's perfectly fine. But don't be surprised if you're not going to be able to grow whenever you decide to grow. You know, I don't know. Nowadays, 
uh, agencies are looking at your social, uh, your digital footprint to see what you've been doing. And you know, there's been people that haven't been hired uh, because they looked on there and it's like, oh, you're part of this organization. We don't want that here. So then I don't think, you know, the only thing that social media is, in my opinion, is an extension of yourself. That That's all it is. So yeah. then if your brand is one of, you know, integrity, uh, you're someone that's a straight shooter, whatever it is that you value, just make sure you're keeping that across the board. Uh, and, and I think so then when you when you are authentic, you don't have to worry about being something else. And I, I think sometimes I think what we found is, you know, people have used the anonymity of social media to become this different person to do this yeah. and do that. And that's absolutely fine. But it always comes back to bite you in the behind. So be whoever you are. And, if, you know, as you grow in and you communicate better, uh, you'll see that you'll attract those people that you want around you. Uh, but uh, so then I show up for an interview with a, a collared shirt and a jacket. You know, I am a professional coach. So this is the way I show up for an interview. If I was uh, presenting a, you know, training, I'd probably be in a suit and tie and glasses because I really can't see that well. But my point being is I'm keeping that that persona. I'm keeping my brand. And I think the thing about it is nowadays, more so than ever, people don't ask the question about what is my brand? Am I a mm-hmm. good communicator? Am I this? Am I that? Um, and if this is my brand, I can rebrand myself. I can become something different. I don't have to stay with whatever I was. Yeah. So. Yeah. Got it. Um, I guess be truthful uh, in the way that you present yourself and uh, be also thoughtful, like think before, especially on the internet. The internet does not forget. So be a bit thoughtful about the things that you put about yourself on the internet. As you said, it will come back to bite you. Just, uh, I always, uh, I'm always amazed by what people put on Twitter. For example, I'm just bringing up Twitter as if you would go to a busy marketplace and start yelling at people about something random that came to mind. That's mm-hmm. what Twitter is like. Why would anyone do that? I just, I just don't understand it. So um, uh, be thoughtful, okay. right? <laughs> Even greater than that, you know, as I look at, so then, you know, the millennials are the first generation to have cell phones, Twitter, social media, that they actually grew up with this, um, yeah. you know, from me, I'm not outside looking in. It's like the only reason I use my cell phone really is for business. Bottom line, even my personal cell phone, uh, I'm, I'm learning to build my social media presence. However, uh, you got a generation of folks, this is all they've used and they've lost that communication ability. Uh, you know, when you listen to how people date, mm. uh, ghosting, you know, if I don't want to be bothered with y'all just ghost you. It's like wow, you know, wow. or <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. It's, it's like at least have the common decency to say, "Hey, listen, I don't want to see you anymore." But and things, you know, even leaders firing people via a tweet or firing people via text message. It's yeah. like, really, how did we get here? So then, it just kind of concerns me because if you can't communicate, a, they're always going to need people that can get the message across to the masses. Always. If you can communicate well, they're always going to need communication and leadership. But as these young people, like my concerns, they don't they don't know how to uh, to to participate in dialogue. Just like, you know, me and you, I come on, we're talking back and forth. We're just talking. It's not like (laughs) yeah, we're just you're saying like, hey, listen, I live in Australia. It's like, man, I I haven't been there. And but they can't. You know, uh, they can't have those those conversations. And although it was light, it was meaningful. It's like, man, you live in Australia and you, you came yeah. from Greece. Wow. You know, you from one great place to the next. It's like, man, I wish. So, you, you know, those conversations, they they kind of lost. That's been lost. And you have a ge- whole generation that's been lost on. Because they only yeah, just know true. how to, you know. And, you know but I'm sorry. I, I think. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that that was my my question. I guess um, uh, just I wanted to to wrap up uh, the communication segment by asking one last communication question because <laughs> then we're going to go into leadership. So um, I guess my, my next question 
is just to wrap up communication. I want to talk about attributes. So uh, personally, I've got examples of really good communications that are very diverse. So for example, I'm, I'm an aviation buff. I like, I like listening to air traffic control communications with planes flying overhead wow. and communications well, there like bang, 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 like uh, call sign. Where are you? What are your intentions? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any special requests <laughs> within, within, I guess, uh, 10, 15 seconds, the whole story has been made perfect communication between two parties mm -hmm. and off to the next thing. Like the ATC, the, the air traffic controller will talk to the next plane, repeat that perfect communication. Nothing has been lost behind. But then I, I look at how I communicate when I write the blog post and it's like a thousand words. And I'm like, I look at it and I'm thinking, should I make it more concise? Maybe I'm just blubbing around too much. Maybe I should you know, cut something. And I think, oh no, maybe the student requires more in order mm -hmm. to complete their understanding. So I guess communication attributes depend on the context, but I wanted to, to ask you, uh, what do you think are at least the core attributes of good communication? Um, that there's always the purpose, I guess the purpose of why e-communication, e-communicating is part of it. But I guess maybe simplified, if, if at all possible, it's very complex, but I don't know if I'm writing, asking the right question. Can you simplify communication so that we know at least what its core attributes for a good communicator should be? Uh, you have your sender, you have your receiver, and you have the message. And those are the core attributes. And it, I mean, like, what, what are you sending? Or, and, and then uh, did your receiver get what you sent? And was that message, I mean, you know, you got to get, it's, it's a loop. You, you know, you send her, you send it, they get the message, the receiver, yeah. and then the receiver sends the message back, but, you know, they got it. So you just have a little loop. A read back. Right. Yes. Read back in uh, uh, aviation also. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I, when I was much younger, I used to play a lot of basketball. Mm -hmm. And one of the... Um, things I remember from those days is that if you would pass the ball to another player, but the other player couldn't get it, mm. it's always the, the player that threw the ball first that is to blame. Mm. So the message, the, the person that formulates the message has to take care to formulate a message that can be received or understood by the intended recipients for their intended uh, pers uh, reason, right, P or purpose. So, if I so you said receive, oh, sorry, um, uh, sender, receiver, and purpose, but I guess the receiver needs to take extra care because the receiver is the initiator of the communication, right? So they need to just think before transmitting communication in order to make sure it's effective. I guess everything else depends on the purpose, right? Whether it's going to be a long message, a short message. Well, and, uh, and I mean, that was just a simple explanation, but you also got to think about your audience. Like you said, you, you know, you're, when you're writing a blog, who are you writing it for? Are you writing it for students? Are you writing it for, for folks that are on your level? Are you, are you writing it? So I think that's really important because, uh, in working in the tech, you know, folks can write some really high level information, mm. but, you know, your audience is for folks on your level. Yeah. But if you're trying to expand and br maybe bring people into the fold, then you, you're going to have to, I won't say, I wouldn't say dumb it down, but I, I would say simplify it, you know, uh, Arkham, was it Arkham's razor? Yeah. You know, the yeah. simplest way to do things. Yes. Yeah. So it's probably the right way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, us, and, and, and I know. Whenever I speak, I always say, you know, a 50 cent word is worth a five dollar word. I mean, because mm. anyone can understand it and you want to make sure that your message is understood so that, you know, they can take it so that they can take it away and maybe spread it. OK, let's switch. <clears throat> let's switch to um, leadership. So I totally get it. Communication for anyone is important, especially in the context of STEM, like an engineering principle yeah. that communicate. Right. What about leadership, though? Why why is leadership important in the context of STEM? Like I'm thinking, um, a student learning how to use an Arduino obviously needs to be able to communicate the work to others. But why do they need to 
be concerned about building up leadership skills? Well, because within STEM, the, the way I kind of look at things is like this. You don't want to be, you don't want to be on the outside. And a lot of times STEM folks are on the outside. They don't have a seat at the table. And it's not because they don't have this, it don't, it's not because they don't have the technical skills, but would you rather have a, a leader that has a STEM background that's grown up in it and is leading the organization? Who can speak on your behalf, who understands the challenges that you have, or would you rather have to communicate that to someone who may or may not take an interest in it? And so when you're talking about leadership, you have to develop those leaders so that they can lead other folks so that, you know, what's important to you uh, gets, you know, put on the table. Because for a lot of times uh, in some agencies, these STEM programs don't get the money, they're underfunded. Uh, you don't get uh, a lot of the resources. So then, you know, you're important, that's fine, but hey, hold on. Uh, if you don't have someone that is an engineer who has those leadership skills, who not only can talk the talk to the technical folks, but also lead people who are non-technical that may be uh, in the contracting realm or maybe in the support staff, so that your, what you need is at the, is at the head of the table. That's the one thing, when I was at the core of engineers, right? Uh, they had one of the things they had talked about was building leaders. And the at the Corps of Engineers, you have a, a general, and a general is an engineer. So because it's a Corps of Engineers, the engineers got all the money. The engineers got all the resources because he was an engineer. So then that's just, it's not an anomaly, but you know, that's just one organization, unless you're in an engineering firm. But when you're in another place and you're a scientist, or you're extremely technical, they kind of put you off to the side. You know, yeah. they don't really, you're, you're not, you're a member, but you're not a member. It's like, hey, you don't get to sit, sit at the big table. It's like, oh yeah, you know, you, you just stay over there. We're making the decisions. So you need to develop these leadership skills because if you don't, you're not going to get heard. Uh, I, I think skills, I'm the, sorry, go ahead. the key word that you used is they make all the decisions, right? You said yes. th they make all the decisions. Is that the 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 key word or the the essence of leadership? Is that decision making, and then the the power to um, <clears throat> to uh, to implement that decision? That's what a leader's, I guess, essence is or superpower is. So then, the essence. I think the leader's superpower is servant leadership. And like I said before, it's, you know, you have to put your employees above your interests. That's what you have to do as a leader. You always have to do that. But like I said, unless that leader has that background, they're not going to understand hmm. some of the challenges that, you know, their folks in the daggone engineering department or research and development or wherever you have STEM folks located within that agency, they're not going to understand their causes. They'll hear it, but they can't really, you know, yeah. or, you know, they don't have any practical knowledge. So leaders, you know, as a leader, you, like I said before, you have to be willing to sacrifice whatever you need to make sure that your team has that. And then they'll make sure that you can get things done. Cause as a leader, you're, you're leading the way people want to follow you. And that's, that's the kind of leadership you want to develop that transformational re leadership where folks say, hey, listen, uh, I'm going to stay a little later because I know that, you know, you're expecting me to get this done. You know, that's that's the type of leadership you want to have for your, you know, for your team or for your organization. You know, one of the big things yeah. I always say, I, I tell my teams, I wouldn't ask you to do anything I wouldn't already, if I've already done it, or, I, you know, I wouldn't ask you to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. Because, but as a leader, you have to say, I need you to do this. I can't do everything. So, I mean, yeah. being a leader of the organization, I mean, it teaches delegate. you how to <laughs> no way. Dele delegate. Yeah, uh, delegate. Delegate. Because but, everyone I is mean, finite. Yeah. Yes. But the other part about it is uh, you have to develop other leaders. You may have to make, you may have to make little versions of yourself. Uh, <laughs> so that the agency Having said on. that. Yeah, actually, that's that is a perfect lead up to my next uh, question, uh, and that is like, okay, in my mind, Steve Jobs lead up, right? But let's let's 
backtrack about 20 years, you are in charge of a, a small group of, of uh, 14, 15 year old students in a STEM club. And you want to instill some of those leadership skills. You want to you want them to experience what it is to be a leader, even if they don't realize that they are in leadership training. How how would you go about it? So it, you've they've, they're working on Arduino projects, right, or on Raspberry Pi projects, and um, you work with one of those students. For some reason, you have identified that you know they would be a good candidate to be to become a, a Steve Jobs in twenty five years from now. What are some of the experiences you're trying to, uh, I guess, uh, help them uh, experience, <laughs> lack of a better word, uh, in order for them to start developing that affiliation uh, with the ability to make decisions that affect other people as well, not just themselves, and also to, to carry them through? And again, 14, 15-year-old kids. I, I would say... <laughs> You have to challenge them. You have to put them in a space. You have to put them in a space for them to be able to fail mm. and then for them to be able to put back together and then learn what the right what right is. And in doing so, you'll teach them to trust their decisions. You know, Steve Jobs was effective because he didn't care about anyone else's decisions. <laughs> you know, he, he, I mean, you know, he was that confident in who he was. He's like, this is the right way to do this. This is so then if you can help develop that uh, confidence in those young persons, then that that will get them through um, those challenging times uh, when their backs against the wall. They don't think they can. I think for a lot of once again, going back to high school, going back to middle school. You know that that social that socially awkward introverted child. You know, it doesn't just start at twenty. It started when they are babies. You know, uh, and people mi not mistreating them, but treating them differently, and, and them realizing, hey, uh, I may not be a part of this group. Um, and I think you have to catch them then, and then help them develop their own confidence. And you know, you may not be a good basketball player. You may not be a good football player. However, you you can design the hell out of a model robot or, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? Or, you, you know, these yes. skill sets, you have to help, you know, because what is it? Uh, you know, you got to work to your to your you have to work on your um, on your weaknesses and develop, you know, no, the hell with that. Develop your strengths. Hey, if you're good at that, let that person know that it's OK to be good at that and develop it from there. I mean, if you could have gone back. And, and someone was developing you in your strengths, would you be the same place now? Not to say yeah. you're in a bad, but you're just saying that somebody's like, well, damn, you know, this is what you need to be focused on. And just, you know, giving you that, giving you that encouragement, giving you that, hey, you got this, uh, that, that confidence, would you be in the same place you are now? I'm not saying that your trajectory can't get to, but what I am saying is if we're trying to, to help these kids, we got to stop putting them down for things that they don't like. Like I wasn't an athlete in high school. Uh, I wasn't an athlete in college. That just wasn't my thing. Yeah. Like I said, I, I read books. I, I worked on myself. I liked the esoteric. Uh, that didn't help me in the army. <laughs> I went <big>. back. <laughs> but <laughs> the army got but, something uh, else out of you, though. Uh, like say again, the the army. In the army, you were able to explore other parts of your personality yeah. that you didn't know about. So, because I guess it it, it broke part of your shell uh, that yeah. you perhaps you were not comfortable with or didn't even know about. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess just to, to rephrase what you said, STEM environments are excellent for the leadership development because it is a place where you can make a lot of mistakes and learn from them, and actually. It's something that is expected, like to make mistakes before something gets, uh, before something works. Um, new gadget that you're building definitely not going to work the first time you assemble it. And the more complicated it is, like um, I'm thinking of ro robotic wars now or robotic competitions where you've got big teams there because they are working on on complex projects. And in environments like that, failure is 
totally normal and expected, but there's also lots of opportunity to display some uh, leadership aspects of all team member personalities as well, because they all have their own, their own uh, <clears throat> aspect of the, the project that they, they are responsible for. So there's pl plenty of opportunity. Um, is that what you were thinking, Ahmed? Oh, yes. And I mean, in, in, uh, but the thing, I think those environments are fine, but you have to put some, there has to be a challenge in there. There has to be a challenge to, you have to be competition. The competition, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the reason why not to, there needs to be competition. There needs to be definitive, definitive uh, success and definitive failure to build that that child. Ability to measure the results. Yes, they. You have to. They have to understand. Hey, listen, you jacked this up. That's fine. Next time, go around. We'll do this. And and it's important because you know those where your life skills are built because you're going to have a lot more failures than you are successes. But you, you're just going to have to pick yourself up off of there. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, and that's, there's, there's nothing, uh, you know, one of the things that I was talking to someone, you know, there's, there's no one to catch you. You, you you're going to have to, you're going to have to figure this out. And, uh, but that's life. You know, if you figure, you know, a hundred years ago, uh, Hey, uh, you have to walk like two miles to get water. You know, there wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like you have no to grow cap. your food. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine going out and slaughtering a slaughtering a cow? I mean, if you eat meat or whatever, I mean, there, there's stuff, you know, 100, 150 years ago, there was there wasn't any supermarkets. You had to do this on your own. So yep. <laughs> well, we got to get glad I'm living in the 21st century. <laughs> so there's no I mean, I was talking to someone about, you know, you had chambermaids because the chambermaid yes. would come and take the chamber pots. And then, you know, in Paris or whatever, they dump them into the street because they didn't have a food system. <laughs> like, can you, I mean, it's like, wow, this, this, and, and hey, we're living it's in modern times. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. man, there's so many, yeah, there's so many examples. Um, but unfortunately, we are kind of out of yeah. time, uh, Ahmed. So I wanted to um, ask you maybe <clears throat> if there's a couple of things you want to, uh, uh, to, of advice that you wanted to offer our listeners and now, now is a good time to do so and then um how do people get in touch with you like you got a, a website um uh, a blog post a, a, a blog somewhere um how do people get in touch with you if they want to talk to you well then uh if if i were to give uh if i would the, the advice i were to give uh i would say whatever you want to do Find someone who's doing it and just walk in their shoes, because mm -hmm. uh, there's you know, I, I think and there's going to be a time for you to put your head down and just work. There is there's going to be a time, and for some people that's 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 their thing. But if that's not your thing and you want more from your life, just just go ahead. I mean, what's what's the worst thing you do? You're going to fail. All right, it's okay. There's a lot of people to fail. It, it, it's perfectly fine. That's part of the whole dynamic. You know. Excuse me. You go, you try, you fail, and then and then you do it some more. That's just the, the, the way life is. So then, that's what I would say to someone who, uh, to anyone. And if you want to reach me, if you have questions, you can. My website is a uh, www.burstconsulting.com, or you can see me on LinkedIn and uh, uh, at Ahmed Burst at LinkedIn.com. And I've kind of change some things on my on my LinkedIn uh because I've gotten more I've got more requests from veterans than I have engineers. So but if you need some support, yeah. support I'm here to help you. So. Perfect. Thank you, Ahmed. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Absolutely. It was it was great. I, I, pre I appreciate the conversation. I appreciate the questions. But you I really want to come to Australia. <laughs> Anytime. We'll be waiting. <laughs>